doing people back again today and I thought I'd do a little bit of a different video we haven't done one of these in a while um, you know just been busy with a lot of stuff going to a lot of matches and yeah you lot seem to be enjoying the vlogs but look being a Palace fan right now has been amazing it's been unbelievable you know I'm so pleased and proud of the way the team have performed towards the end of the season um, considering where we were a few months ago just look at us, you know, we're going to mainly be talking today about the transformation under Oliver Glasner um, from us being a side that looked like we were going to be doomed to be relegated and battling down there with the likes of Sheffield United and Luton a few months ago to a side that potentially could get top 10 and looks like more of a top 6 kind of team with the way we've been playing the football which has been absolutely superb over the last few weeks and that so it's been unbelievable and that's um, and yeah, we're also going to talk about Sunday's crucial game and that as well, to why it could be one of the biggest games for us for a long, long time as a Palace fan and that, and why it's so crucial. We're also going to be talking about the under-21s. And we're also going to be doing predictions, not just for the Palace game, but for all the other games across this weekend. We're going to talk about, we don't really, we don't really usually speak about the under-21s. The Crystal Palace under-21s won the Premier League International Cup in the final at Sellers Park. We beat PSV by a goal to nil. We got our revenge after what happened last year in the final against PSV at Sellers Park where we lost 3-1. We learnt a bit. It wasn't perfect. You were there. I was there enjoying myself with the head chef. Big up the head chef and shout out to them and that as well. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a rocking atmosphere. Yeah. The performance, you know, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't amazing, yeah. but, you know, we, we showed spirit, belief, <clears throat> and we never really gave it, up, did we? Throughout the course of yeah, the match. Yeah, I mean... Even um, though it was tough, I'd say. Yeah, it was it, it was a tough game. Um, yeah. PSV first half, I thought, should have probably um, led. They had more of the better chances. Yeah. And Palace played, but I thought, better in the second half. Mm. Uh, but we always looked dangerous. We had some, you know, going forward and in individual plays. Yeah. Um, but we got the all important goal, um, you know, uh, and they won the game. Uh, the, 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 the the mentality of them is fantastic to be, to be honest with you I mean the way they stuck at it and they just kept on going and they wouldn't give in so um, full credit to Crystal Palace I think you know probably you know when you get to the final you you win it then you deserve it so um, congratulations to them um, you know we've got some we've got some good youngsters there so let's just hope that you know with Glasmi in place we can mm. bring them through to the first yeah. team. I mean, look, my man in a match from that performance was um, the captain, Joe Whitworth, you know, in the first half, especially, um, he was right in front of me and that, you know, he made some top saves, oh, yeah. he kept us in yeah. the match, you know, he's so crucial, key, he's got that premiership experience from last season with a couple of games that he got under his belt and that as well. I thought David Ozo was like a tank and a proper brick, solid, composed CDM within that under-21s team and that he was superb. I mean, he's got plenty of premiership experience and he showed his class mm -hmm. yesterday. He's got a bit of that check to Kure, you know, yeah. and he's got a little, he's, he reminds you of Rodri a little bit. He's just like, like I said, he's like a tank and he's solid and he doesn't let anyone get by him. He holds that ball up mm -hmm. like a rock, yeah. you know, and his strength and yeah. his effort and his work rate, you know, think, you, you got to credit him massively in that. He, he looked like a leader in that middle yeah, of yeah. the park and that as well. Yeah. So another they, bright player they, for the future. Yeah, they, they, they all play. I thought, I mm. thought, PSV, particularly in the first half, yeah. they, 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 they they were a bit more um, solid as a team, I thought. And technically, I thought they were a bit better. And slightly, um, sort of, um, physically a bit better yeah. than, than Palace. But, they looked um, a little bit more sharper at times going yeah. forward with their and, play um, and that as well. But, I mean, I think Palace good. They stuck at it and a, yeah. a much better second half, I thought. Yeah, but um, but they won, so which is fantastic. Well, we got some promising young players. Yeah, that fit yeah, into the yeah, system, yeah. You know, going into next season. They just got to. Be, they well. just got to. They just got to make sure they get, they they're developed correctly. You yeah, know? that's important. Exactly. Yeah. Credit to the under twenty ones. Did as yeah. proud. First time I saw a trophy in that. <laughs> well, I was winning a trophy at Sellers Park, but yeah, it was yeah. a brilliant night Good. and. Yeah, the future's looking bright, and then some of them players will definitely do well under Glasgow next season. I mean, it feels like the Glasgow effect is not just affecting the first team, but the under 20 well, yeah. No one really saw this run coming, really. Like a few months ago, I thought we'd be, we'd just about be good enough to get in the top 15, and that the fact we'd be battling relegation, yeah. we'd be down there. Uh, there was a period before even Oliver Glasgow came to the club that I generally thought we'd get relegated. It was that bad. I was looking at teams around us like, I thought Luton were better than us at one point. I thought Luton were generally much better than we were. I thought, oh, a few, like let's say for two, three months ago, I was like, the three worst teams in the league are us, Sheffield United and Burnley, based yeah. on the formula, based, yeah. on, based on how 
you know, momentum uh, and the way things were going yeah. results wise within the league. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm like most Crystal Palace fans, I'm absolutely mm. delighted with the, with the way the team are playing. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, I think the Liverpool game, obviously the game that we won, but the goal that we scored. I mean, for me, that was probably a bit of a the, the turning point because yeah, when we I mean, I think mm. we 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 strung about twenty passes together to get that goal. Yeah, um, it's called of the and season. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well. Even 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 Klopp looks had said, "Wow, yeah, yeah I quite believe that Crystal Palace could score a goal like that." Mm. And I think that that was a was a turning point, and um, and that was that was a good win. The yeah. Liverpool because I I always tell Tristan that when when I see Crystal Palace or team win, I look at. What, is it a good win? You yeah. know, did you did you play rubbish for ninety minutes? You always look at the quality of get the a lucky goal well. at the last minute, mm. or did you play well against the top opposition? And the Liverpool game for me, you know, they all said, "Oh, Liverpool only missed a load of chances," but so did we. So, um, yeah. you know, that was a good game. Mm. Um, and then West Ham, um, well, they never turned up, but uh, you can only play what's in front of you, and we yeah. scored five goals. So, exactly. you know. And the teams who who, who, who who didn't turn up, we we you know we took them to the sword. So yeah. um, and the Newcastle win was another really good win um, against a good team. A good as well. good team. Bear in mind, they hadn't played in like ten yeah. days prior and, to that match. Yeah, and and the, and the Wolves win. Um, whilst it wasn't as, as fluid as the other games, again, um, you know, showed great mental strength. Um, you know, with the guy sent off. Yeah. Um, you know, I know it was late in the game, um, but I thought that the whole team played, and then we we lost Hughes as well. So you know they 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 showed um, some some good sort of uh, spirit spirit amongst the team. Yeah, so you Keep know, so it's all going well at the moment. Yeah, definitely um, had Man United winning that as well. We played the Man Park, <laughs> crucified them, ripping them. Do you know the the, the, the <laughs> only disappointment with the Man United? Yeah. I just really wanted the, that fifth goal when Ed Wiley at the post. Well, it to be like a five 0 nineteen seventy one. I just want. I, just want, I mean, <laughs> the, fourth, the fourth goal went in on sixty two minutes. Yeah. I'm thinking we got time here to get some more goals. Yeah, we should have so, had more. Should have won that. Um, you can't. You can't mm. complain. Four 0 Man United. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, look, like I said, you know, I remember when we lost to Brighton. Down, you know, down the motorway a few months ago, oh. things were were not looking yeah. good. I mean, you look at us now, and it's been a drastic change. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's listen, mind blowing, isn't it? Yeah, I think <laughs> you look at these things in hindsight, and stuff, mm. so you know. Um, but for me, whilst I think mean, you know, I've I've, I've been a a, a, a Roy fan. Um, but for me, the Brighton game was the game... Before he was sacked, by the yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> or before I, when he made them stupid comments after the Tottenham back, back in I, October. I, I, he was making yeah, some odd yeah. comments, but I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. But the the, the 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 Brighton game for me was the one where I thought, "Sorry, Roy, I think you've you you've you've blown it and you've just gone too far." I mean, the at least a substitution thing for me, and I, that was when it was done. Um, and then the Chelsea game, um, I knew something was up in the Chelsea well, game. The away one, back the away December, game, yeah. yeah. So when we lost three one at Chelsea, I two, knew two, things were two, 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 two one, was it two one, two one, two one. Um, and I knew that things were wrong because. Um, Roy, Roy never stood up for the whole ninety minutes. Yeah. I think he, I think they both knew at that game they yeah. were going. Um, but when Oliver Glasner came in, to be honest with you, I was a bit like, um, what w- you know, wasn't tight sure. But then I, I think I'm like that with any manager. Yeah. Um, and then you have to give the managers a bit of time. And oh boy, how's he turned it round? If he, you would have sorry, if you would have told me. A month ago or so, or whenever we started winning and that, that we would have won five out of six games. I would have laughed at you. I would have called you the Crystal Palace version of tie, oh, basically. After the Sheffield United, <laughs> I think the Sheffield United game, yeah. we had played all the teams below us. So all the rest of our the rest of our games were all mm. the teams above us. And I thought our running is going to be really, really tricky, you know. Mm. And how wrong was I? I mean, they won you know five out of six games, um, and playing some fantastic yeah. football. And um, you know, and everyone was excited. I mean, you know, I think Sunday's game is going to be a cracking game. But he's he's Glass has come in. Um, he's given the players um, confidence. Yeah. He's got them fitter. Exactly. He's got them managing longer. managing the game better. We don't look like conceding mm-hmm. with twenty minutes to go. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and the whole every time the team mm-hmm. plays, the whole team plays well. Yeah, you definitely. know, the, the 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 guys on the pitch are all playing for each other. Um, Munoz, uh, is it Munoz? Um, he's, Munoz he's becoming he's, right he's becoming a fan's favourite. Yeah. Um, that eight guy, mil we spent on him. Oh, eight that, mil. That guy, Bargain. that guy is setting the grass on fire on the wings. Mm. I mean, 
I absolutely love him. I cannot wait. I, you know, if I, if I want a player to score on Sunday, it's him. I, I, if, if you could get yeah. a goal on Sunday, that would be fantastic. Adam Warren as well. Another great signing. Yeah. Um, he settled in. It's like he's been playing a full season. He settled in. I mean, he's, he, <laughs> he's only signed him. He made his debut against, I think it's a bright, bright, yeah, bright yeah, the same with Milner as well. Yeah. And, um, unfortunately, for unfortunately, I mean, what a game to make your debut in. And then to come through that yeah. and play the way they're playing mm. um, with a manager who's mm. just a complete breath of fresh air. You know, and again, my only regret, to be honest with you, in hindsight now, looking back, in that if he'd joined Palace at the beginning of the season, mm. who knows where we would be today. Currently right now. I mean, look, look. The stats are quite crazy, but I want to talk about the formation. We went from playing a 4 3 3, which, you know, the more we play that formation, the more weak and spineless the team were performing. We conceded a lot of goals. It wasn't working and that, you know, we were very exposed. And then we changed it to a 3 4 3 formation and that, playing with more of a back five, back three, however you want to call it. What it allows in that as well, you know, with fullbacks that are driven forward and are very pacey and energetic and that, in the likes of Tyrek Mitchell, who's been completely. It's like he's a different player as a left wing back now. The guy's mm. getting more mm. forward. He's scoring, scored mm. the other night against yeah. Man United. And you've got Daniel Munoz, who is just a complete breath of fresh air on that right wing back kind of side and that for us, to be fair. So it really, you know, <laughs> it, it really it, it really helps with our pressing. We're pressing more, you know, we're right in the yeah. opposition's face so we can cause more problems and score more goals because of the high press and the yeah. high line that we're yeah. playing in that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes Munoz goes on some of his runs and I'm thinking, where are you going? Yeah, exactly. But the guy, and then suddenly he's, he's, he's defending, he's got yeah. back and you're like thinking, I don't know how he does it. I think the game finishes and I've said among other things when you know, uh, people have spoken to me, um, he's the only player, I think, when the game's over, he could go out there and play another game another of football. Game, another game um, or two, isn't it? Yeah. He, you know, so, yeah. I mean, it, but a high press, like, it just, you know, it makes, yeah, we, we, it, it makes it know, a lot stronger. We, it really makes it sharper and more yeah, direct going yeah. forward. I want to talk about Alicia and Eze. The way they've been playing, it's been um, just a joy to watch. It's, 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 it's just a joy watching those two play, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, you know, all the pundits are saying, I think Eze plays, you know, better when, when, when Elise is on the pitch. I think it, I think yeah. Eze takes some of the pressure away exactly. from, 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 from Eze. Um, but uh, it's just an absolute joy to watch. I mean, whatever happens in the summer happens. Um, you know, th there's things that are out of our control. So, yeah. you know, we've not much we can do about it. But as long as Palace, uh, you know, um, just do the right thing, to be honest with you, and uh, make sure we any money we get from whatever, then it's invested well. Well, I mean, I want to talk about their link-up play and that as well. You know, with Eze and um, Elise, you see all the third goal that we scored against Wolves, Eze and Elise. You know, mm -hmm. some of the goals to score against West Ham and United, Eze and Elise, they're just, they're just a dynamic duo. You know, mm -hmm. they're literally just like, they're really iconic and, you know, some of the football they produce, you know, to allow to score the goals that we have recently is pretty outstanding and that, you know, they're just, they're, they're, their quality yeah. is way ahead of I some think, of the other players I think, in, the team, I think, in my opinion, hence to why we're doing so well. Yeah. You've got a bear in mind to think about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, some you, you could say it's becoming, it's, it's coming at the end of the season where a lot of clubs are like taking their foot off the pedal and the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and I think particularly when you've got players like that, teams eventually will try and find out a way of stopping them. But that's when they're, they then got to, you know, they got to rise to that occasion. So there are some managers that are going to look at how they're going to, you know, how you'd stop Elise from playing, how you stop mm. Eze from playing, yeah. you know. Um, so you're, you're always going to have that, 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 that sort of difficulty. But every time a game finishes with Crystal Palace I find it quite difficult to find a man in the match I mean what this for, rate yeah everyone's playing for me, so well for me for mm. me probably I would reckon that the most improved player in the Premiership has got to be Mateta oh yeah I was going to talk about yeah. it I mean he can't stop scoring I mean I, 16 goals yeah. in all competitions this season I mean, I mean, yeah. like you said at the Newcastle match we actually did have a turn of four yeah. once I mean when, when, he, when he first <laughs> came to the club yeah. I wasn't sure about him because mm. I thought he just didn't look right you know, it was he just you know didn't look like he was ever going to score a goal, and then there was one season yeah. where he started to click. He started under the air a couple of years could, ago. Yeah, yeah, you could see that he put the he put the effort in training, and he was trying and he was improving himself. Definitely. And then he went off the ball a bit, mm. and now he's come back. I mean, physically, the guy is quite is tough. I mean, yeah. the, the sides of him, you know, he gets the ball. And there's two blokes on him. There was a th there was a play in a Newcastle game, and you know they defend. You know, I think Byrne was one of the defenders. Yeah, Byrne, yeah. Just shrugged both of them off. So um, 
you know, uh, he's just having a, a phenomenal season. He's working 10 times harder than the likes of Edouard and, 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 and not in it. Yeah, <laughs> and to be at Crystal Palace yeah. and actually have a centre forward mm. that you, you're expecting him to score. I mean, we play in a game, I'm expecting him, I, I, you know, I go to a game now and I'm like thinking... You're expecting him to score, especially I'm, at home I'm, I'm, I'm well. expecting him to score, I'm expecting <laughs> Crystal Palace to play well. Yeah, exactly. I'm expecting us to cause the opposition trouble. And you know, and and you know, the confidence that the, the supporters and they've got when we go and watch a game of football is fantastic. I mean, here's a, here's a few crazy stats. So regarding the shot accuracy stat, Mateta is um, the second highest player to have the best shot accuracy in the Premier League. Yeah. The one he's first regarding shot accuracy is Phil Foden, and his goal conversion and that is the best in the league, sitting at thirty point two percent. He's got a better. You that, know, um, yeah. goal conversion yeah. and Haaland. Yeah, so he, he, yeah. his conversion of chances is, as I say, is the best in the Premiership. Um, so mm. uh, full full credit to him, you know, and that's why he, even he's turning heads as well yeah. you know, across Europe. Um, because, you know, to be honest with you, good centre forwards are difficult to come by. Um, so, you know, if you're in the Premier League and you start scoring goals, um, you know, you're going to get a lot of attraction. But you um, can tell he's been coached really well by Glasgow, a manager who's a winner, and he's turned Mateta into a, a striker who's succeeding yeah. at every notch at the moment. Yeah. You know, yeah. working its socks yeah. off. I, he can. He's actually got. He's actually showing and exposing more yeah. of his fine ability compared to how he was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Where all, he, yeah. all, all you would do is whip a ball and he just head it in, really. Mm. But this guy's, you know, like the Man United goal he scored, where he just ran past a couple of players in that and mm. smashed it past an honest goal. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's what I like seeing I, 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 that as well. I he's, think, he's becoming more consistent yeah, too. Yeah. Goal scoring. I think he, I think his best goal was the first was his goal against Man City in, after two minutes. Oh um, yeah, I thought a, that, a that, that, that was a difficult. That was a difficult chance. But well, the angle was quite tight, tight as well. He was put yeah. away really well. I know, but yeah, I mean, is I mean, Glass has just been he's, he's been a massive inspiration and in that you know to me, I'm sure to you. He's completely well. He's it, completely just it, changed it, the way we've played and the it, way we it, are as a team and. It just goes you to know, show it's, it's, that, that, it's, it's that, astonishing. That, that squad, that squ that, those players, yeah. what we had at the beginning of the season, you know, um, mm. you know, with, again with respect for Roy, we we simply wouldn't be here where we are now if 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 Roy was still the manager. I mean, um, we'd be relegated. I think. Well, the ironic, the opinion. ironic, the ironic thing is, is that even if yeah. even if we'd have lost those mm. last six matches, we'd have still stayed up. It would have been horrible though. That just goes to show you how this the the, the Premier League this mm. year is weak. Yeah. In the fact you had three really weak teams in it. I mean, when you if, if Luton lose on on Sunday, yeah. you know, twenty seven points would have kept you up. But like which, imagine imagine us enduring what the likes of Forest and Luton oh, have been through for the last couple of months oh, and that that would be horrible. I know, I know. You know, know you wouldn't even know, know like know. If, if if losing six in a row would yeah. still keep you up but, or send you down. You just wouldn't know. Yeah. It's hard to tell. It would have and, been hard to tell. And, for and, us and the thing as well is, is that next season, the, the Premier League, I mean, is yeah. going to be a lot tougher. It will be tougher than this season. Another, thing, another sort of interesting thing regarding Glasgow, he's picked up more points within this run compared to what the amount of points that Roy Hodgson picked up before he got the sack in February. You know, mm -hmm. he's only been here, what, three months? Roy had about, I'd say, a good, what, like six months or so of this season before he was sacked or something, yeah. maybe a little more. So it goes to show how, you know, Glasgow is determined to turn things around mm. and get results and get the team playing some superb football. Mm. And it's worked out mm. in our favour in that as well. Mm. You know, he's made us a force yeah. to be reckoned in one, this league. One clearly. thing I noticed, that even, even in the pre-match kickabout that the players do, uh, just watching them, they just seem a lot more intent on what they're yeah. doing. A lot more focused on what they're They've doing. They've got like, like a system. Rather yeah. than walking out there and just start, you know, going through the motions. Yeah, exactly. You can see... That it's something they've been told this got, really, yeah. this really matters. And they've they've really got like specific well. methods. This Sunday we play Aston Villa at home. Now, before I talk about this quickly and that before the game, or before I talk about the game, I should say, I want to congratulate Aston Villa. They got top four um, despite I think they haven't won in their last five more competitions. They still managed to do it. That's fantastic. Yeah, they, they, somehow, they, yeah, fair I play mean, to them. You got to credit them. Yeah, the manager's got to be manager of the season. Right? Emery, because Emery's got to be. Yeah. He's got to get manager of the season. I mean that is. No one, I don't think, expected that. Um, yeah. To get for for, yeah. for Villa to get top four is a fantastic achievement. I mean, I think you would have had them you to know. get Europa League Conference League, but top four. Yeah, top four is, is, yeah. is outstanding. Yeah. It's just a shame that they got knocked out in the semi finals, but I'll be honest with you, I just think they got tired. Their bench the other day looked, you know, just, you know, 
win that they were playing look great. But yeah. um, now they've, they've, they've done it. So I'm hoping that, if, you know, they, their players might be on the beach. <laughs> but they've had a know. good season. They're a very good side. But they might want to finish yeah. the season on a high. Yeah. You just don't know how it goes. Yeah. I mean, you just don't know. I mean, like Watkins, he's got, if he scores this weekend, he'll get he, 20 he, Premier he, goals. He's, 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 he's their danger player. Yeah. Will you take but, him to the Euros? If you, uh, I think I would, would actually. Would I think I would. Yeah, I yeah. think I would. I would. But yeah. they, 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 they um, it's, it's. I think it's San, Sunday. I like to think it's going to be a cracking game of football. Yeah. I'm confident that. we'll get something. Um, and I, th- I think, I think it's yeah. going to crack a game, and I think Crystal Palace is going to come out on top. Hopefully, yeah, we'll get more into that in a minute. But this is why Sunday's match against Villa is probably our biggest game, not just this season, but for a long time, probably since um, the Leicester game last year. Yeah, you know, which. That turned our season around, but we've spoken about that before. We'll talk about this one. If we win, um, if we win in that, we could potentially get top 10. However, there are a few key factors that could easily prevent us from not getting top 10, really. Now, we've got a massive chance in finishing about to scum down the motorway, away, um, but it depends on their result this Sunday and that. Now... We we could pretend, like I said we could potentially get a Premier League top ten top ten finish for the first time in nine years in that um, you wouldn't have thought <laughs> we'd get top ten with the predicament we were in what like two months ago I would have I I was saying to myself we'd be lucky to get top fifteen with the way things were and that you know with it being at home and up you know the match being at Sellers Park I'm really optimistic the supporters are going to be buoyant and absolutely cock a hoop before the match they're going to be ready for a good performance and there's a lot of high hopes and you know, really high levels, like the proper high levels of confidence going into this match. A lot of fans are going to be optimistic. Now, for us to get top 10, there's a few things we've got to hope for. We've got to firstly hope that Wolves um, lose at Liverpool, which they will, they should do. Um, we need to make sure that um, we win, that Palace beat Villa. We've got to beat Villa, in my opinion, you know, no, no doubt about it. We have to win a draw or a defeat. It's not good enough regarding us trying to get top 10. And we need to hope that Brighton either lose or draw. But equally, we have to win. we also got to hope that Bournemouth lose or draw. But equally, we have to win that Bournemouth are away at Chelsea. Chelsea should win that. Chelsea, they've, already, they've basically already qualified for the Europa League, but they want to try and finish above Tottenham. So they're, they're going to really make sure they win that game against Bournemouth. For Bournemouth, they've been playing well. And like I was saying, a lot, a lot of people do know Brighton are playing Man United on the final day. Man United, in their last four games against Brighton, in all competitions, or I think in the Premier League, yeah, in the Premier League, sorry, they have lost four in a row. Um, and Man United have got a ferocious record down at Brighton. They have won down at the Amex. Uh, they haven't won at the Amex, I should say, since 2020. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough game. But we see Man United do his favours. They need to win that game to try and get Conference League football. So they have got something to play for. Brighton haven't really got anything to play for. Well, they actually, they do. They do. They've got to play for top ten. You know, same 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 here for for us. We we got something to play for in trying to finish in the top ten. So it's going to be a very competitive afternoon. The the, the thing with Brighton is the goal difference. Yeah. So the way that it works is that if. Yeah. Um, if Brighton draw, yeah, I think yes. If Brighton draw, yeah, um, and we win one nil or two one, mm. um, then I think Brighton get the t- stay above us simply because they scored. We'd end up with the same goal difference, but Brighton would have scored more goals than us. However, if Brighton draw one one and we win four three, then we would go above. Brighton because we would have scored more goals. Yeah. So it's pretty tight, but I mean, there's still a lot. I mean, you know, obviously the first thing we've got to win our game. You have to win our game. If we don't win our game, it, it's, 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 it's better off. We've got to win like, I'd say 2-0. We've got to win by two goals, a 2-0, a 3-1, or like a 4-2, something like that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You never know. And but like, the way we're playing, I'm really confident we could do that. We're more than yeah. capable, yeah. in my opinion, than that. But that's our tough Sunday's game is going to be. And you're going to get a lot of you're going to get a lot of other results on Sunday in my opinion you're going to get a lot of crazy games it's going to be very competitive you've got the title you've still got the relegation stuff that's still kind of on the cards but the main thing is we just got to get top 10 and we got to win and I'm really optimistic and confident that we could do it if we get top 10 what an achievement that will be considering yeah. a few months ago I thought we'd just get top 15 and I thought we'd probably be finishing 16th, 17th yeah. or 15th yeah. or whatever yeah you know, it shows how far we come on Sunday. Got to win, got to get a result, and we got to be up for it. Villa got nothing to play for. They've got their top four, their season's done and dusted. They can have a party, but what will make our season 
you know, pretty good is if A, we finish above Brian, B, we get top 10. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy because this season, I've never, like a few months ago, I just wanted it to end. I was like, I'm going to season end. I was sort of thinking, let's just win a couple games, stay up and then the season's over. But the way it's been recently, five wins out of six, it could even be six, it could potentially this weekend be six wins out of seven mm -hmm. if we do beat Villa. I would not want it to end, I would want it to continue. Oh, yeah. Because how that's, good we've been. We've just, just been winning. It's like three points again, a lay, a lay, basically. It's every week, isn't it? <laughs> summer coming up, big summer for us. Hopefully we can keep Eze, or at least they say, Step Palace, I won't know. I think Gay's definitely going to go, in my opinion. If we, whatever money we get for some of them players that we are going to be selling, and plus the money from the Premier League, the TV rights, or whatever, you know, whatever money we got to back Glasner, we've got to give it to him, we've got to back him. If we don't back him, it's going to be a long old season. You know, we just got to show that we're making progress and stepping up. You know, we're moving with the time. Premier League, get, it gets tough every year. You know, it's competitive year in, year out. You know, next season's going to be a crazy season. We've got to make sure we're ready and up for it. You know, and there's going to be a lot of changes and we just got to adapt and get used to it mm -hmm. and make sure we're fully, you know, on the board of it already, yeah. to be honest. Speaking of the lineup, we're going to talk about the team that should start this weekend and that. So, I don't think there's going to be many changes. There might be a couple. Um, Dean Anderson will definitely start. Left wing back will be Mitchell. A back three, I think it's going to be Anderson, Gay, and um, Richards. And I think Klein will be dropped for Gay and that. Mm. So, yeah, that'll be the back three. And right wing back will be Munoz. The midfield is going to be Wharton. And I think Lerma, he's back in, in yeah. um, full training. He'll probably start most likely because Hughes is out injured. And obviously, we've got no Takura. He's been missing since November. Yeah. And Eze will be in cam. And then you've got Elise I mean, she, and Mateta. Yeah. That'll be our front three. So that's Thank, the team I think we'll yeah. start. I, 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 yeah, with well, the Hughes thing, I'm not sure if he's totally out of it. Yeah. I mean, they said they... I don't think that you know, he was going to have some sort of scan or something yeah. like that. So hopefully it's not too bad and it was just a bad bruise. But we'll just have to wait and see. But I think that team there, just was just mentioned, is probably the team that's going to start. Um, and, uh, you know, just come out of the blocks and fly Aston Villa and you see what happens. Do. They've got nothing to play for. We do. There's yeah, well, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But, you never know. You've got to be um, optimistic the way we've been yeah. playing. I think I think yeah, we're I think we're in for a cracking game of football. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. remember the Wolves game? You got that prediction, I right? I know. I I've never I've never been to a game this season where I've been that confident. I was just really I wasn't thinking we're going to well, lose or draw. I was like three points. We're going to get the I, win. We're going to play Wolves off the park, and we're going to see a lot of goals from Palace. And look what happened. I couldn't believe the amount of <laughs> the amount of, the amount of <laughs> no, you know. quite a lot of people actually predicted three one. I even watched the Wolves block, and two of their fans said three one. Yeah, I know. So, you know, it was... Um, Life's good as a Palace yeah. fan right now, trust so me. So, it, 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 it was good, it was good. Yeah. I mean, the, the the atmosphere at Molyneux was cracking. I mean, oh, was, no, the Wolves fans, the Wolves fans were good. I thought the Wolves fans were well, a, the the a little bit. They were a bit quite, I mean, but from, it was from, Palace, from Palace, the Palace fans. I mean, Wolverhampton was red and blue, it was flooded with red and blue, basically. I mean, at half time, we, the Palace fans, we went mainly. down, we, 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 <laughs> we had to go under it because it's so hot. We were going to get the sun laid, but the Palace fans sang for the whole half time. Yeah near the bar underneath and uh, it was fantastic you I know, know. No, it was great time, time. Great probably time. the best away day for over a year yeah, for good, us to good, good, that good, as well. good. but something we haven't done on this channel is we're gonna we're gonna predict all the game week 38 matches within the premier league it's the final day a lot of crucial matches there's going to be some matches that are going to be very close and some matches that are just going to be more like a free for all really you know it's just going to be high scoring throughout could be seen three threes four fours Someone winning 5-2, a 6-0. You never know what to really expect in this Premier League. So, we're going to kick off with one of the big games this weekend. Arsenal, Everton. Arsenal need to make sure they win in order to stay in the title race. Um, hoping City lose um, to West Ham. We'll get onto that in a minute. But Arsenal, Everton, what's your prediction? Just call well, prediction. Um, I think the game's going to be influenced what's happening in yeah. Man City. So, if Man City going at half-time 3-0 up. You might find that Arsenal again ends up a draw, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go three 0 Arsenal. Three 0 Arsenal. I'm gonna go um, four 0 Arsenal. They can score a lot of goals and they can they're very good defensively. They've got the best defence in the league, I believe, yeah. in that as well. Yeah. You know, very solid and that's gonna be a comfortable afternoon for the guys. Man City um, versus West Ham. Man City need to win to win the title. I think they will win. That you know, it's an easy job for them. West Ham uh, are going to get battered. West Ham away from home recently have been poor and they've been leaking a lot of goals. Yeah. I know they won last week was against yeah. Luton Town. They're basically I, 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 dead and buried. I, I think 3 0 Man City. 3 0 Man City. I'm going to go, um, oh, I'm going to go 5 0 Man City. I think City are going to rip West Ham apart. And the way Haaland's been playing recently, he's, he's bound to get a hat trick, in my opinion. Um, a crucial game for Newcastle United. They need to win this one in order to try and stay 
um, in the Conference League spot. You know, it's going to be very competitive in that. They take on Brentford away at the Community Stadium and that. The Brentford Community Stadium, like I said, uh, what's your prediction for that one? I'm going to go for 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two in that one. I reckon it is going to be... Newcastle only got wins. I'm going to go 2-1 to the Geordies and that. Um, Man United are way at Brighton. Now, this is where things get interesting. Man United need to win to get Conference League football, um, you know, to finish 7th. Brighton, they need to win to get top 10. And this links with our game because we need Brighton to either lose or draw, you know, yeah, I'm gonna, mainly. And obviously, we've got to win. But what's your prediction for Brighton Man United? I'm going to go 2-0 United. 2-0 United, yeah. I'm going to go... You know, I know they've got to win it. So, I'm going to go... I'm going to 2-1 Man United, 2-1. I think it's going to be a very close game, but United know they've got to win. They've got their players, they're some of the best players back in. Rashford, Fernandes is back. Hoyland's due to score in it. Martinez is back for them. Um, the Sandro Martinez, the centre-back. And, um, yeah, with Garnacho and them lot going forward. And Tomini's come back recently in that as well. The way Ahmad Diallo's been playing for them, yeah, they'll, they, they, hopefully they'll get the result done down there at the Amex for themselves and do us favours. Um, Burnley, Nottingham Forest. Forest basically need to win to stay up, even though they're already safe. Yes, they're already safe. Yeah. yeah, I mean they'd have to lose. They'd have to lose six nil to Burnley, and then Luton would have to win six 0 yeah. which isn't going to happen. Exactly. Um, Forest are going to win that. I reckon four nil. Four nil, you think? Yeah, four nil to Forest. Two nil Forest. Be two nil Forest. Um, the other game, Luton. What, what's the score they have to win to stay up? Six nil. They would have to. They would have to beat Fulham six nil. Six nil. Which isn't going to happen either. Yeah. What's your score for that one? Luton um, Fulham is a um, Kenilworth, isn't it? I think, yeah. I think Luton are going to win that. I think Luton will win that 2 1. Yeah, I think it's going to be a. I think it'll be a close game, be a very even match. 3 3. You know, definitely be goals in it. But Luton can score goals in the circle of Fulham. You know, both sides. Luton basically got to win 6 0, but I can't really see that happening. They've got a very open defence and Fulham yeah. got a very good attack, so it's going to be a, a close one. Looking at 3 3. Chelsea ball. Chelsea, they basically qualified for the Europa League, but they know they've got to win because they want to finish above Tottenham. Um, and get fifth spot, but Spurs will have to lose to Sheffield United. What's your prediction for Chelsea Bournemouth? And bear in mind, we need Chelsea to beat or draw against Bournemouth. Um, want Bournemouth finish it above us because they'll get top 10. 3 1 Chelsea. Ball. You think? 3 1 Chelsea. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we don't want Bournemouth to get top 10 over us. So I think Chelsea will win. It's going to be uh, 2 0 Chelsea. 2 0 Chelsea, in my opinion. The other game and that that I was talking about um, was Sheffield United, Tottenham. Tottenham basically got Europe League football. Um, yeah, Tottenham lose and Chelsea win. Tottenham finish sixth and Chelsea finish above Spurs in fifth. Sheffield United, horrible season for them. Oh. 16 points. Because he 101 goals. 4-0 four, four, four Spurs for that one. Yeah. 5-1 so um, Tottenham. I think Sheffield United will score. Sheffield United are going to go straight down to League One. Yeah. Um, an emotional affair for um, Jurgen Klopp. His last home game. Um, his last ever Liverpool game as Liverpool manager before he leaves this summer. As Liverpool take on Wolves. I can't see one winner. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a couple of years ago when Steven oh, Gerrard played his last game for Liverpool. Yeah. Alice went in and spoiled the party. Well, I do remember that, don't beat, I? Beat them 3-0, <laughs> I think it was. Yeah. Um, but no, I think I think Liverpool will win that game. Yeah, I think I think 3-1 Liverpool. 3-1 Liverpool, yeah. I'm going to go... Um, I'm going to go with 4-1 uh, Liverpool. I think Liverpool win at 4-1. And um, yeah... Um, the last game, of course, is our one. What's your prediction? We got a win. So, what's your score prediction for this I'm, one? I'm, Palace Villa. I'm going. To, I'm going for three two Palace. Three two Palace. Oh God, I'm dreading this one. Yeah, regarding the score prediction, because yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go. I think Villa will score. I'm gonna go three one Palace. I think it'll be a three one win to Palace. I think we'll do it. I think we'll get top ten and I think the likes of Bourne from Brighton will finish behind us and we'll finish above the scum for the first time in what almost two and a bit years. So Well yeah. this will this will be quite special because yeah. you would never have said that like two months ago. Mm. We would ne we we were we weren't at the races, so yeah. Um yeah, so to, to actually even be in a position mm. where we might pick Brighton in the last game of the season. I mean, is it weird, weird cloud cookie? It'd be man. amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be yeah. superb. But you, all you would just hear is cloud all over non-stop. It would just be epic this Sunday if that happened. Honestly, yeah. in it, it, we, we, wherever happens Sunday as well, you need to make sure we give the players a good send off at the end yeah. of the game because they thoroughly deserve it. Yeah, um, especially those that might not be with us next you know, season too. Yeah, they 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 thoroughly deserve yeah, it. Yeah, massively. So, you know, irrespective of, of 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 what might happen. So um, you know, but. Uh, all the fans are going to get behind the club on Sunday, so it'll be a great game. Yeah, well, hopefully we win on confident we are, so is he. It'll be a great 
day on Sunday and that the last match this season for us and the last home match for us this season. Let's end on a high. Let's get top 10. Let's finish above the scum and let's get the win. Come on, you Palace man. Come and on, And hopefully we do so. Hope you enjoyed the video. In a bit, my people. Take, Take care. care.